Let's discuss that as well as the prospects for the rest of the EMS sector with Mr. Saurabh Gupta. He's of course the CFO at Dixon Tech joining us on the show. Saurabh, hi, good to be speaking with you. This more or less looks like a reaffirmation of the earlier notification that the government had issued. But any uh, fresh takeaways from this and have you seen an uptick in terms of the domestic inquiries then given that imports have been curbed a bit? Yeah, so you're absolutely right. I think so. There were certain requirements under the CRO where you had to take the BIS requirements, but you were allowed to import. But now the government has put certain electronic products under the restricted category. So apart from the BIS requirements, they have also put it under the restricted category. So every time you need to import, you need to take license from the government. So clearly this will incentivize more domestic manufacturing. And this is clearly one more step ahead in, in government's initiative of whole Make in India of electronic products. So clearly it, it's, it's a, it's a, a, it will lead to more, more manufacturing in India. Absolutely, Saurabh. Good afternoon. This is Vinny joining in the conversation as well. Uh, this does support, you know, more Make in India products. But, you know, you also have been, uh, Dixon as a company has been making a lot of effort in terms of backward integration, whether you look at it in terms of the laptop side, uh, as well as in terms of overall, uh, when you're looking at it for other products. Uh, what is the strategy of the company? What is the growth that one could expect now moving on from here on from these segments? You know, mobile has been a growth driver, but how do you see these segments moving? Uh, so, Vini, mobile will continue to be a large growth driver for us. Clearly, one, the opportunity pool is quite immense. Uh, so, if you look at our numbers for last year, almost 60-65% of our revenues are now coming from mobile as a category, which will continue. So, of course, uh, one, we have an absolutely strong order book on mobiles. We've added a lot of customers. We are in the process of adding some large global brands in that category. We're looking to almost uh, grow our volumes by four times from 7 million smartphones that we did Last financial year, hopefully we should be doing somewhere around 20 30 million phones this year. So, uh, and also apart from uh, the, the the mobiles, there's also backward integration opportunities that we are pursuing on the mobile display uh, because we already have a large mass, large scale in this category. And uh, even in other categories like TVs, washing machine, we are pursuing some backward integration products. The order books in those categories also look very healthy. And in some categories, we are also pursuing uh, kind of our own designing solutions as well. Yeah, but could you um, kind of talk a bit more about that, Saurabh? Because Street is clearly banking a lot on the mobile segment. You do have a, you know, very uh, marquee client list already. But I do understand you're speaking with some large global players as well. Um, and of course, Mr. Vachani also was talking about how India as a whole has the potential of becoming $100 billion in the smartphone exports. Uh, but for yourself, let's say four to five years from here on, what could be the overall pie for smartphone manufacturing for Dixon Tech? Yeah, so if you look at the overall mobile phone market, it's around 3 lakh 30, 3 lakh 40 thousand odd crores. And uh, if I ex if I just uh, uh, derate it to the manufacturing level, we are talking about a number of 2 lakh 70, 2 lakh 80 thousand odd crores. And at present, we are not uh, we are not there in the Apple ecosystem. So you can reduce some num volumes uh, numbers there as well. So clearly, there's an opportunity pool of almost 2 lakh, 2 lakh 10 thousand odd crores. And uh, if you look at our other categories like TVs, lighting, washing machine, we have been able to take a market share anywhere between 30 to 35%. And we feel confident in the next two, three years, we should be able to take, uh, uh, if not more, at least a 25, 30% market share in this category as well. So that's what we aim for. That's what we are targeting for. And if you look at uh, our customer acquisitions, so yeah, so we were pretty much working for uh, the top six brands uh, outside the large global brand that I just mentioned. So, so we have got a decent volumes and the volumes with them will continue to increase. There will be some export potential with some, some brands. Yeah, so it's overall, it's a large, large, large opportunity for us. Right, and uh, sort of, you know, what about the opportunity when one could see from the EMS side, right? Overall, right now that I'm seeing your revenue mix, mobile and EMS division in Q4 accounted to around 67% of the revenues. Um, out of this, how much is EMS and what is the EMS growth opportunity you're seeing? So EMS growth opportunity, uh, at least on some verticals like telecom and networking products, uh, where we have got a, a where we are a PLA bene PLI beneficiary, and also we have got a large order book from the two largest telecom companies in India. So there also uh, we are looking to more than double our revenues this financial year, and the order looks uh, order book looks pretty healthy, and there is a huge potential of import substitution in this category as well, uh, and then other categories like variables, variables. Again, it's a high growth vertical. We have a tie up with one of the largest brands in India. So again, in that category also, uh, we are looking at a 
uh, decent growth. But I think so, uh, after mobiles, uh, it will be followed by IT hardware. Uh, so next year, it will be a, a decent year for us as far as the IT hardware products are concerned. Decent year in the coming times. But this quarter, I think a bit of a disappointment on the margin front, Saurabh. What's the plan to scale it up back within at least that 4 to 5% range? And the street is penciling a 60% EPS growth expectation for the next 3 to 5 years. How realistic would you regard that? Yeah, so more than the margins, we feel confident about the absolute growth in revenues and EBITDA and our expansion and improvement in our ROC profile because margin profile is also a function of the mix. And clearly mobile, where, where we are seeing the largest growth is a relatively a low margin business as compared to other verticals. So clearly at an overall level, yes, operating leverage benefit would kick in more backward output or backward integration and own designing would lead to an improvement in margins. But at the same time, since the largest growth will, will happen in mobiles and then followed by IT hardware, so the margin profile will be somewhere in this cat, sub 4% or slightly higher than 4% kind of a number, but on a much higher revenues uh, is what we're looking for. Right, and uh, sort of just last question from me is in terms of your CAPEX plans, right? Uh, 2024 was around that 570 crores that I think I believe we had done in terms of CAPEX the company had done. Uh, 2025, uh, what is the CAPEX uh, plan that you have? So, uh, very broadly, those numbers should be including the acquisition that we have made. We are awaiting the approval of Competition Commission of India. So, both uh, the organic CAPEX as well as the acquisition put together, it should be in the range of 700, 750 odd crores this year. Last question, uh, when you see yourself hitting that 50,000 crore mark on the top line, you are talking about that operating leverage. Do you see it likely in FY26, if not 27? Yeah, definitely, we think, uh, yeah, so this year will be a large year for us. I don't want to give any specific numbers, but clearly uh, the customer acquisitions that we have had, the new categories that we are entering into, so clearly, yeah, we should have a large uh, growth, uh, much, much higher growth than the industry and our competitors. Okay, point taken, Saurabh. On that note, we let you go. Thanks so much for making time and speaking with us. So the management sounding fairly confident about the growth prospects going forward, especially the mobile business. The focus is on improving the ROC and the return ratios, not as much uh, as, much as the margins, and very confident of hitting that 50,000 crore mark sooner rather than later with growth being better than the peers. He uh, continues to see that recovery or uh, trading near the day's highest point recovered almost six tenths of a percent from the day's lowest point, 140 points recovery from the red that we are seeing. But uh, the central government has reaffirmed restrictions on import of certain electronic goods. The Commerce Ministry issued a notification maintaining status quo on an earlier order that they had passed. Uh, my colleague uh, Sumita is joining with us to give us the latest update on this. Uh, Sumita, what's happening in terms of these restrictions here? India has reaffirmed its restrictions on uh, the import of certain IT and electronics uh, equipments uh, products as well. This is according to a notification that was issued by uh, the Commerce uh, Ministry. Uh, in fact, in the Commerce Ministry, a notification that was issued, it also states that the import of unregistered or non-compliant uh, products that are uh, listed, uh, of course, in Indian law, uh, they, they will be restricted, their imports will be restricted. Now, important to also note that this order has been in place since 2021 but there were certain amendments that were made some changes uh, to the rules that were made so this is just a reaffirmation of uh, the, the 2021 order that uh, is already in place so what does this exactly mean let's break down this notification now uh, the notification says and i quote for led products and dcac supplied control gears for led modules agencies will randomly select and test samples from consignments based on limited defined non-destructive security parameters so uh, customs if they're not really happy with or if if they see that products are non-compliant with the order, uh, those products will be destroyed if uh, products are non-compliant with the standards set by the Bureau of uh, Indian Standards or they don't comply with laboring requirements, they will be sent back for re-exporting or they will be destroyed. Now, important to note that India uh, last year, in fact, uh, uh, imposed restrictions on certain IT hardware products. This was, of course, after uh, domestic uh, manufacturers uh, raised concerns about the import of these items. And also, the government wanted to boost Make in India and only wanted to uh, to get those uh, import uh, items import 
uh, imported uh, which uh, which met with certain parameters or, or which uh, specified authorization specified quantity and value according to the tweak rules the government tweaked these rules so why this notification right now well a DGFT um, part of the Commerce Ministry has been trying to issue a clarification after there were concerns about which items could be imported which items could not be imported so this step is uh, essentially uh, some sort of a clarification for the overall electronics and IT industry thanks Amita for that if you like this video then like share and subscribe to ET now